Hi, this is me. I'm Michelle. I'm 24 and still trying to figure out what it means to be a first generation Hmong American woman. I grew up in Massachusetts in a little town called Fitchburg where the Hmong population was just big enough for us to have an annual Hmong New Year. This is my dad. During the Sikh War, he left all that he had, even his family, for the opportunity at a better life. He crossed the Mekong River and made it to Bon Vinai Camp in 1981. That's where he met my mom. They fell in love and they got married once they got to the U.S. And they had me. Aren't I cute? It was only me for a while. I was an only child until the age of 15. That's when my parents had Sylvie and Justin. Growing up as an only child was often lonely. My parents didn't always have the best relationship either. It was rare that we expressed our affections for one another. Given this, I yearned for attention and love as a youth. I found it in toxic relationships and thought I was normal because that was all I saw on TV and social media. Messages of toxic masculinity, domestic violence, and abusive international marriages shadow our lives and our ability to see what is loving. Today, my experiences inspire me to continue sharing narratives about healthy relationships so that youth in my community have role models to look up to. Describe the relationship that we have with each other and who we are to each other. You're like my best friend, and you're always supportive, and you also keep me accountable too. So you help me remember who I am when I'm, I feel like I'm forgetting myself or I feel like I'm not, I'm unsure of myself. It's really great to have you as a, as a best friend and as a brother. We definitely don't agree on everything. Um, we really understand like our growth and like where we want to grow into and we're both able to really push each other to grow in, in the ways that we think are the, are the best for each other. I know that you're the kind of person that I could approach and process with. I might not have all the answers and like my viewpoint might be completely messed up but like I could bring it to you and you won't judge me that you can like walk me through and you'll help me understand where I'm coming from um, whether it be like something extremely small, whether it be something big. Um, I know that you're the kind of person who like, whose perspective is something that I, I, I really, really value. I would describe it as just like mutually respectful and ultimately wanting the best for each other. Even <laughs> if it means yelling at each other sometimes. Yeah, you know, people feel like, you know, we're like a couple, but we're just so good of friends. I feel that we always be blunt about things. You don't sit there and wait for me to get get into deep before mm -hmm. you tell me something, you know? Talk about a time you were inspired by the other. What did they do? What inspired you? When you gave the commencement speech at Hamlin during your year, I was very inspired to see not only like my own brother, but Hmong, the Hmong community really rising. We are people who are full of perseverance, full of strength, full of struggles and adversities, yet we are able to power through, and you made it through that. My parents being divorced, my mom not having uh, a voice, and she was a breadwinner, and just like y'all ladies, I, I, I could relate to the struggle because I was watching my mom, just like how I'm watching you guys, and y'all gave my sister, my mom, and you know, uh, our community of voice and I, I like that and um, that's what I'm here for you know so support things that are positive yeah. you know if it wasn't I'll be honest with you I wouldn't even be around would you describe your relationship as healthy why or why not what do you think a healthy relationship requires I would say healthy relationships whether it's friends or romantic requires open communication you should feel completely comfortable being who you are, even in complete silence. Like for me, it just came naturally and just built over time. So you guys established like a foundation, you know. You just can't meet somebody and say, okay, I could talk to this person. No. I might tell you about my romantic relationships, you tell me about yours, and we will, one, give each other honest feedback, but two, we also know that, you know, we're not going to cross this boundary because we don't want to 
affect that relationship in a positive or negative way. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do give each other space to do that. We're respectful of the partner's perceptions of us. There is a very strong belief in the monk community that men and women can't be friends. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully we can show that you know, when you do have mutual understanding of wanting the best for each other, that it can be a good friendship and it can work and it can work even when we're in our own romantic relationships. And it's not easy, but it does require open and honest communication and understanding. And I think that the relationship that you and I have is, is really healthy. We're able to keep each other accountable uh, when we're messing up and whatever we're doing, when we're not living up to like our core values that you talk about. Um, we're able to guide each other back into that. Especially as, as men, not being able to process your thoughts and not being able to share your own feelings and emotions, that's very toxic. But me being able to share them with you has really helped me become more, more of an adult and more of a person who's matured mm-hmm. to who I, who I am today. Mm-hmm. You're completely right you know, to, to be able to, to, to really share our emotions and to, to recognize them and process them each other. Like when, whether we're, we're like really afraid of something or something's like really making us sad or angry or like even when we're, we find a lot of joy in something, um, being able to share that with each other is like something that has really allowed me to survive and thrive in a lot of ways. And I always really appreciate being able to do that with you. Through your relationships with each other, what did you learn about loving someone? I think one of my favorite memorable moments was we were at, um, one of Pink Fu's events where she was interviewing elders. Oh, yeah. yeah, and so whenever I cry, you cry. No, <laughs> no matter what yeah. happens. Stop it. And so I started like bawling. So Why? it was like, it reminded, me, it reminded me of my parents. Yeah. And I started crying and I look over and here he is, he's crying. Yeah. And you know, and so I think there's just something where we have that chemistry that no matter what I'm feeling, like he just is into it. And I remember like looking over and here he is like just bawling away and like for me it just reminds me of how how much i respect and appreciate you you know is that not only are we best friends that we that we talk about things we actually go through things together and like whatever i'm feeling and going through like you put yourself in that space and go through it with me and i'm not alone yeah i think one thing that you've really taught me is um understanding where 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 my boundaries are um, in, in my, my relationships, um, in my friendships and my romantic relationships and my family relationships is really understanding, um, like, what am I doing to love myself in those situations? Like, what am I doing to preserve myself and to, like, not lose myself um, in the people that I care about? And I think um, your voice has always been, like, a really strong reminder to, to never forget that because it's, it's impossible to love people if, if, if we're not taking time to love ourselves.